Okay, good afternoon, everybody. Um, and thanks a lot to the conference organizers, uh, Benny and uh, Elaine, uh, no, namely, and others that I'm sure I'm forgetting and, or don't know. Uh, terrific conference. I think the one, one thing that hasn't probably been said enough is that this conference is a wonderful interdisciplinary conference. We have attorneys here. We have consultants here. We have people who work on institutional investment here. We have people who work in corporate here. Um, so this is all just a really great amalgam of a lot of different people with a lot of different uh, viewpoints and interests. And, uh, and I might say that I think, uh, you know, that uh, the, the role of institutional investors in governing their companies is still a very hotly debated topic. Um, it's, it's still very unclear to me, even after two days of listening to excellent papers, it's still very clear to me that we still don't know that much about the effect, uh, if any, of institutional investors. So some of it you have to take by faith, so it's a good place to hold this conference, I guess, in Jerusalem. Uh, Benny, I don't know how, why you put me last. I don't know what that means, but I guess uh, um, I'll, de I'll deal with that. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. Anyway, I've, I've, enjoy, I've enjoyed this terrifically. Um, all things must come to an end. And I mean, after my presentation, not before my presentation, all things good. Okay. So this is a, this is a, a, a wonderful collaboration with Miriam Schwartz-Ziv, and I think we have very complementary um, skills in many ways. I, I won't go into that, but uh, we've become uh, good friends uh, over the uh, years uh, working on this project, um, all the blood, sweat, and tears of this project and uh, I've learned a lot from her. Okay, so um, we're gonna talk about um, the say on pay vote, and I'll explain shortly, uh, br very briefly, what say on pay vote is all about, in case you don't know. I think most in the room do know. Um, and we're going to um, explain why we think this is a, a, an especially salient or especially important change in voting uh, rights of uh, institutions and regular individual investors uh, in terms of expressing their viewpoint about management. And I'll explain a little bit of that. I won't do it justice, but uh, we think this is a very uh, important innovation uh, brought about by the Dodd-Frank Act. Okay, so um, kind of the traditional literature, I'll go back and forth here so you can kind of watch this. The traditional literature on um, institutional investing or any type of uh, investors in a stock is that um, the large block holders are the ones that have the incentive to um, monitor their, um, hold, to monitor their companies, their executives and so on because they can internalize the uh, externalities much more than can small shareholders, obviously for many uh, seminal papers, including Grossman and Hart. Um, so um, we think that this SOP vote, the San Pay vote, um, may have shifted this equilibrium a, a touch. And we don't want to overstate this, but we think uh, that this may have shifted things a bit because the idea that large uh, shareholders are the ones who are the only ones who incent are incentivized to uh, make statements or to voice their uh, concerns or to uh, negotiate with management is is based on uh, is centered on the idea that there are costs there are non-trivial costs um, in doing so and say on pay if nothing else um, creates almost a no-cost um, situation for investors to voice their pleasure or displeasure with management and very briefly I think that um, and again I won't do this justice you can read our paper to get more of this or talk with, with us at the break very briefly we consider say on pay as being kind of a bigger issue than just say on executive pay, which is what it nominally is, because um, in, 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 we, we get, you know, from our discussions with various industry people, um, such as ISS, that um, uh, institutions uh, and corporate executives sort of treat the say on pay vote as an overall uh, met metric for how satisfied or dissatisfied an institution is with corporate, uh, the corporation and its management and its mm -hmm. governance overall. Not just with the executive pay. You think about executive pay, it's a drop in the bucket for most companies. So it's something to do with you guys are or not doing a good job and we're going to voice our displeasure in the way that hits you right in the pocketbook um, if, uh, if we don't like what you're doing. And that could be very effective as we, as we all know. Okay, so very briefly, if you haven't heard of San Pay, San Pay was enabled by the Dodd-Frank Act and it was uh, put into place um, by the uh, SEC in uh, response to one of the passages in the Dodd-Frank Act that called for it. Um, uh, you know, and so you might wonder, well, what was the, 
uh, impetus behind uh, the San Pei passage in Dodd-Frank. And so Miriam and I went and uh, read that passage in great hopes that we would find all these lofty ambitions of uh, Congress, that they were there to give the small shareholders a voice uh, or things like that. There was nothing. There was nothing. It, so it, it seems to be that uh, Congress put this together in a hurry in, in uh, some sense and didn't really state, they sort of, state, sort of treated this like this is a, 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 a thing everybody knows needs to happen, but they didn't really give us a whole lot of uh, foothold uh, to, um, base our, um, to base our kind of uh, priors on in terms of what, what San Pei might do uh, in the alternative hypothesis. Um, so anyway, uh, me me mechanically or uh, um, mechanism of this thing, logistically, there are two types of votes. First of all, a company has to hold uh, within, I think it was one year of 2011 when it was enacted, um, they had to hold a frequency vote, which meant that they had to um, have their shareholders vote on how frequently they wanted to have a San Pei uh, vote itself. So they voted on the frequency of the vote, which is kind of a strange concept. And uh, they could um, vote either one, two, or three year frequencies. So they have to have at least every three years, if you are a company with at least $75 million of free float uh, equity, uh, which is basically the entire Russell 3000, you have to have a vote at least every three years. And many firms do it every year, okay? Depending on the frequency vote. Okay, so that, that's it on San Pei. I won't bore you any more with that. So, um, so, I get, so again, I think a little more color on this. Why do we think San Pei, uh, the San Pei vote is important? Part of it I already kind of elucidated on because it's a very low cost um, uh, uh, participatory event um, for small shareholders especially. And you know, how else do they have to express their displeasure with uh, management? Well, they have things that happen at the annual meeting, right? They can... Uh, vote against the, the management uh, nominated slate of directors, which they don't, you know, which is tough, right? To get an alternative director supporter, you have to write them in. So this is tough. You can not ratify the auditor. I'm not sure what that would do. It's, you know, almost never happens. So the San Pei, and there, you know, you could, you could in essence, um, you imagine, and there are many cases where there is a shareholder proposal put up, and I don't want to minimize um, the importance of those types of things. But I'm just saying that this is a way that every corporation of any kind of size at all has to have a vote um, by all shareholders, okay, who want to vote anyway, um, every, at least every three years, regardless of it, whether any shareholder puts up any proposal. So it's so low cost that it, that it really represents, I think, a, a, ver a very different sea change in, uh, yeah, and those are just like, those don't work, um, sea change in, um, uh, how uh, uh, small shareholders can govern their companies. Um, and so you might ask, well, does San Pei have any bite? Well, you know, we're just going to tell anecdotal evidence in this paper. This is not really the, um, the importance or the uh, driving, motivating force of our paper. But it seems that some uh, Stu uh, Spencer Stewart survey um, indicates that management is extremely concerned about the San Pei vote. And you might, you know, not be too surprised if you're a corporate manager you know, making 10 or 15 million dollars with bonuses and stock options and so on, you might be a little concerned if uh, shareholders are voicing their displeasure about your pay. That's something that's going to, you know, immediately concern you, much more than many other things. So another actor in this little piece here is ISS. And I don't want to spend too much time. Um, and how, how am I doing on time so far? Okay, that's perfect. That's perfect. Okay. So I'll speed up a bit. ISS is, is uh, important in our framework, I think, and I want to stress it because ISS was created essentially to reduce the cost of um, monitoring company uh, uh, boards, uh, executives, and so on, how well a company is working. Institutions needed um, to uh, find some central uh, processing, uh, I don't know what to call it, information service. So they subscribe to this. ISS, and, and they're uh, like a three, four mile bike ride from my house. And, and by the way, I have one of their, um, I think I have one of their high level, level executives on the board of my center. Um, so this has kind of gotten, it's kind of ironic, right? My center has ISS, so my center is well governed, of course. <laughs> and then it's sort of ironic too, because in, in return, um, I try to get their data, so I'm kind of like a little bit corrupt, and uh, you know, so it's, oh, the whole thing's very ironic here. Uh, but uh, but uh, 
they've been very good. So they, they are there. I use them there. I put them up as the example of a, why we think that institutional investors demand some type of low-cost monitoring. They're the guys that provide it. Okay, now we're going to focus on mutual funds in this paper, and the main reason is actually quite, um, uh, 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 quite specific or quite uh, uh, pedestrian, I guess I might say, and that's in blue, is that uh, these are the only funds that have to uh, report their votes um, on everything to the public. So you can get this data you know, on how they voted, and so we're going to focus on mutual funds in terms of aggregating how the sand pay vote went. You can also get the, the aggregate sand pay vote, okay? But uh, in order to get um, the voting patterns of individual institutions or funds, all you can get is mutual funds, okay? So we're gonna be interested in mutual funds and we're gonna be interested in institutional invest advisors, all of their mutual funds in aggregate. Okay, so I can also build stories that Mutual funds could be thought of as kind of the marginal investor because they own so much of every company out there. Now it's about 30, 35% of each company, each publicly traded US company out there. So they do um, have a big, if they want to make things happen as a group, they could potentially make this happen. But I think the, the big reason we use it is because this is the best data, okay? So I wanna show you um, the, at, at the institutional level, give you some comfort that uh, different institutions vote differently. They don't just mechanically um, vote uh, in a block uh, a a as birds of a feather, nor do they mechanically use ISS recommendations. So maybe you can see the list of you know, big names here, uh, very large and largest institutions out there, some of them. Um, you can see that BlackRock, for example, 34% um, of the time votes against ISS's recommendation where um, dimensional fund advisors, the good old Fama French guys, okay, never do, okay? So a lot of this, you know, there are a lot of reasons for this. Um, some of it is uh, the cost of monitoring and things like that, but there are just, um, you know, different institutions have different policies. And so we think that this uh, cross-sectional variation across institutions in their proclivity to vote uh, with, or, with or against management, regardless of what ISS says, um, gives us some good cross-sectional variation that we can tease out kind of the story of the, the, the hypothesis that we want to focus on without incredibly worrying about that it's correlated to other things because we've got a good, nice, heterogeneous cross-section. If we can look at the size of a holding across different um, investment advisors and how they vote on sand pay, um, then we might be able to uncover some things that are hopefully um, not too... Um, correlated with omitted variables. This is just, this is, this is, um, that's a good question. Sand pay. Okay. And when they vote against the ISS recommendations, they do it, you know, on either side or they kind of more uh, stingy yeah. or yeah. more generous than yeah. ISS. Yeah, this is just a measure of, no. I, I don't think there is a, they're, they're meaner to management or they're nicer to management. I, so here's a, here's a statistic I can tell you, is that um, ISS recommends voting with management about 89% of the time, something like this. So ISS, I think, 11 and 12, the ISS vote says to vote against management. So it's 89% with, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's why I said, yeah, yeah, thank you, Joe. Um, so uh, ISS, I guess, thinks that most companies are well-governed, you know, uh, except for 11%, uh, but sometimes these guys don't agree with that. So I don't know how this shakes out in terms of, are they meaner than ISS, are they nicer than ISS? I think it kind of depends on the institution. Okay, so let me, let me get to the, the findings here um, before I get too deeply into this. I've kind of described the actors. The findings here that we have are that uh, for a given institutional investor, they'd vote differently on say on pay when they have a small shareholding versus when they have a large shareholding. And uh, we, we measure the size of a shareholding in terms of how influential, how important it is in their portfolio by its portfolio weight, as well as how influential it is or important it is in the overall cap structure, equity structure of a firm by measuring the fraction of the uh, outstanding equity owned by the institution. So small scale investors seem to, um, well, we find that they 
vote differently on sand pay in general. And it doesn't mean that they always vote, oppose management, but they are more likely to oppose management uh, than are uh, large uh, uh, investors. Um, and it's particularly... Uh, both ways, both ways. I'll show you. Okay, and, and this is particularly strong in the institutional level. So we think we have kind of two major, you know, main contributions the way we think of it. The first one is the first there, and the second is that we um, think that our contribution is also that uh, kind of what I showed you in that table before is that voting really happens at the institutional level. And so this uh, this table I showed you before indicates, you know, a couple things, you know, but kind of I guess uh, the thing I forgot to mention is that this indicates we probably need to use an institutional fixed effect, right? Because institutions vote in a particular way. We would like to see the variation within institution um, for uh, voting on sand pay within institution across different holdings of uh, stocks. Okay, um, so let me, let me skip through the hypotheses. I want to have time to show you. So here's the answer to Jill's uh, question, I think, or no, I guess, Jill, you asked the, what, the what the results were from these. But just to, uh, just to um, reiterate, how do we measure holding of a company, holding of a firm stock by an institution. We aggregate, for example, for Fidelity. If let's, let's think about Apple shares, okay? So we aggregate across all Fidelity funds, um, all of the Apple shares held at a particular point in time, um, shortly before the sand pay vote um, uh, at, the, at the Fidelity level, okay? All their mutual funds. Now, of course, we can't find out, we can't figure out um, you know, how they voted their other stocks, right? Because Fidelity um, manages separate accounts and all kinds of other things. We can only see how they voted their mutual funds. So we, in essence, limit our analysis to looking at the aggregate of mutual fund holdings across Fidelity, hoping that that's a good proxy for um, the rest of their stuff. But we, we don't know, because there's just no record of how they mm -hmm. vote the other stuff. Okay, and again, we do it two different ways. The aggregate holding of uh, Apple by Fidelity in terms of the fraction of Apple held um, of shares outstanding and also what is the portfolio weight across all uh, Fidelity funds, if you think of it that way, mutual funds. This turned out to be, and I said we had worked on this for years, and that's because um, it is a big data matching project. We have to, you know, besides sweet talking ISS and getting their nice uh, voting data, which uh, really was necessary for this project. We have to marry it with holdings data um, and mutual fund data and um, uh, um, uh, characteristics of firm of stocks so that we can control for things like book to market. We have to uh, match it up with executive comp to get executive compensation. And uh, we have to have some blockholder data too because blockholder is going to play a role in our, uh, um, our setting here. Okay, now uh, so, so when I say small versus large shareholders, I want to be very clear here because most people here and elsewhere think of small shareholders as being individual investors like me. Uh, well, individual investors like me don't vote, right? <laughs> I don't vote. I'm, I studied mutual funds for 15, 20 years, 25 years, I guess it is now. Um, I don't vote. I throw those things away. You know, I'm going to confession is good for the soul here. Uh, <laughs> we are in Jerusalem. Uh, <laughs> I throw those things away. So when I say small shareholder, it's, I'm talking about institutions that have small shareholdings. So they might have anything, you know, they're not going to be holding, you know, uh, 100 or 500 shares like Russ Warmers. They're going to be holding more meaningful positions, but a small shareholding by an institution could be 0.2% of the outstanding shares, could be 1%, could be 2 per, thank you, 2%, whatever. Okay, and a large shareholding will be more than that, okay, whatever that is. So we're not like having a cutoff here, but you can think of an institution with a large shareholding being perhaps holding 4% or maybe even 5%, maybe they're even a block holder, okay? And so the idea here is that uh, even if you, the, if you are large, if Fidelity owns, you know, 4% of Apple in aggregate, this gives Fidelity, our story is that this gives Fidelity some in with talking with uh, Apple's executives or their board, okay, and, and voicing their displeasure if they think things are going wrong with the Apple iPhone X or whatever release date or whatever, or, or recent earnings or things like that, um, or, or executive compensation. But we think that, again, executive compensation is sort of a proxy, a catch-all for displeasure uh, with a company. Um, 
Okay, so let me show you some empirical results. So if we look at uh, the SAMPE votes, we do this over about, a, I think, a four-year period in our latest results because SAMPE has only existed since 2011, right? And some companies have only, have only voted once, once or twice, I guess now, because remember, some companies are on a three-year cycle. So um, we have kind of a, a limited time series here, so we have to make the best we can. We're blessed with a great cross-section here. Right, because we have um, in, lots of institutions and lots of stocks. Okay, we don't have so many years that we can see the sand pay vote, but we've got lots of stocks. So this is pretty cool. So we can uh, fix, we can um, use a fixed effect uh, for an institution, and we can see how that institution votes across its stocks. So the dependent variable here is how the institution, in aggregate, uh, so I'm saying here fidelity, how did they vote on Apple stock? At, uh, during a particular year, okay? We pull that across all years, so this is a panel regression. Maybe you can see that top level um, thing there, okay? That all the coefficients except this one for when you measure the institution's um, size of uh, holding as its portfolio weight. In other words, the portfolio weight of Apple among the portfolio weight of everything that Fidelity holds in their mutual funds, maybe you can see that uh, these, uh, the portfolio weight is positively and statistically significantly correlated with the um, dependent variable, which the dependent variable is do you support management on sand pay? Okay? The only one that doesn't come out so strong is one where we don't use, right here, we don't use this institutional fixed effect. So this sort of establishes that we need to, you know, data says this, kind of the common sense says this, we need to use an institution fixed effect, and that's what we do. Um, and then maybe you can see also here that there is some evidence that um, when block holders own a, a, a significant fraction or more uh, shares of Apple, this induces um, the um, institution to uh, vote, uh, more likely vote against management, okay? So this is an interesting finding that uh, block holders seem to impel um, uh, investors to vote against management. And you could like imagine there may be some omitted variables in there, so we're not going to try to over-interpret this result, but, uh, but it is an interesting result that block holders seem to be correlated with something that, uh, that uh, investors don't seem to like, okay? Um, okay, so, um, so in there, and there's just an interpretation of our results economically. So you'll always find in these, uh, you know, the sand pay vote is, is a difficult thing to study because you're not going to find, you know, like I said, 89% of the time ISS uh, recommends vote with management in favor of management compensation. So there aren't that many instances where ISS says management isn't earning their keep. And then e even beyond that, there aren't that many instances, you know, where uh, there are a huge number of, of uh, institutional and other voters who vote against management. So things are a little bit knife edge in this world of say and pay vote. And so, so just getting small, but, but kind of, uh, on the other hand, pushing back on that a little bit, ISS and others have told us that if a, uh, first of all, if there is some danger of there being a significant fraction of negative votes on sand pay, management gets very concerned about this and they start talking to their, um, their larger shareholders, and this could include block holders, but also all the way down into some of their, um, you know, non-trivial institutional shareholders. One of the kind of anecdotal stories that I, that I have is that when I was at the University of Colorado, Scott Schulzel was the manager of the Janus 20 fund. He held a pretty big, um, he, the Janus 20 funds uh, had about 30 stocks at the time, and it was about a $20 billion fund, so you can, you can imagine they had huge uh, positions in each stock. And so he had a position, this, Scott had a position in both AOL and Time Warner in 1999 and 2000. You know, this was like the first and the most disastrous 21st century uh, merger. So when they, uh, so Scott came to talk to my class and he said when the merger was announced, um, Jerry Levin and uh, Steve Case um, called him and, and wanted to get his reaction, gauge his reaction to this merger announcement. So, and, and Scott was probably holding you know, like, uh, you know, two or three percent of each of the stocks. So you know that these guys are getting access. And this, again, drawn in, in a very nice paper yesterday, models this, uh, this uh, type of voice or displeasure, cut and run, and that kind of stuff. So it's very much in keeping with that. Okay, now I'm not going to go over the mutual fund level because it's really more of the same, and really the institutional level is more powerful in the way we think things should be done. But things done at the mutual fund level come out to be 
um, this thing. Okay, so let me talk about the overall aggregate outcome. So we can figure out how did the overall all shareholders vote. Okay, we can get that from the records, okay, from the ISS data. Um, so for each company, so the dependent variable is what fraction of all shareholders voted for, say, on pay, and then we regress that on the fraction of shares held by block holders and compensation. And the main point of this uh, regression here is that now this, um, this uh, regressor, the fraction held by block owners, flips sign, right? Remember we found earlier that, that uh, institutions were negatively, had a negative propensity to vote for SanPay with greater block holders, but now it's flipped to positive across the aggregate. Well, this indicates you know, that the block holders are voting if, with management. You know, maybe that, maybe that's, uh, you know, no, no kidding, you know, to you, I don't know, but um, they vote with management. So this kind of reinforces the idea that block owners and other large investors have different ways to uh, engage with management and they prefer not to air their dirty laundry to uh, um, uh, uh, antagonize management and to, um, they, you know, they can get their way in other ways or to, um, you know, impact the stock price and things like this. Um, okay, so now, um, uh, so, I'm, so I'm running a bit out of time here, I think, um, but uh, so we try this. So, so, so one thing we're, we're going to be worried about is, you know, whether we're picking up an emitted variable here, right? Because um, the sand pay vote and how, how investors express themselves about management through sand pay could be correlated to um, some emitted variables. So I, I know corporate finance a little bit here. I'm not in this area, but I know that there's always a concern in this area, okay? So we want to like, make sure that this say and pay vote result kind of is robust to different samples and different uh, institutional investors. So one of the things we wondered is, is it, this just the Ilyev and Lowry story, 2015 story, which is that um, investors vote, um, a, a vote against ISS more frequently when they have big shareholdings. Their theme, Ilyev and Lowry's theme or mechanism is that large shareholdings give you the scale and the um, uh, economy to care about doing your own analysis, okay? But we find that even when ISS recommends four, you know, when, even when ISS recommends four, either way, it doesn't ma matter how ISS recommends, um, they'll go with ISS or they'll go against ISS uh, as they have um, smaller shareholdings in our sample. Um, in, in, you know, they'll pay attention to ISS, but they'll also independently go against management more frequently than ISS does, says to, recommends to. That's kind of the point of those two samples there. So our story is that there's this other mechanism going on that uh, small shareholders um, are not, you, you, they, they have their, uh, so Ilya and Lowry is large shareholder, you know, large shareholdings matter because there's an economy of, of monitoring your company. Ours is that small shareholders are also doing something with some type of regularity. They're not just voting randomly and they're not just, you know, so small institutional shareholders are voting in a particular way um, that is also independent of how ISS recommends. So this says again that small shareholders seem to be more willing to voice their displeasure against management than do large shareholders because of the consequences of a negative vote. And we also do this with non-index funds and index funds and we find similar things here. I'll talk about this more in one minute. Um, we, do some, we don't want to push too hard on the concept that sand pay is just the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's causing, you know, apple pie and motherhood and, and it's, causing, uh, it's causing corporations to do the right things. But we do provide some evidence on the margin that, uh, you know, that sand pay does some good things. The, fir the first thing here isn't that. The first thing is that um, sand pay votes, um, if there are uh, a, a bigger negative vote on sand pay, this impacts the stock price negatively. So this kind of backs up that large shareholders probably don't want to air their dirty laundry and suffer that car. But I know we, we don't want to push this too hard. Um, yeah, there was one instance here that there was a really significant one that sort of anecdotally, thank you, anecdotally po points this out. Um, but um, and, but we, we do a few other things, I guess before I leave this slide, we do a few other things like look at, they won't have time to discuss it or in the paper, we look at uh, um, actions taken by uh, the corporation after a somewhat negative sand pay vote and things like the CEO is more often replaced if the sand pay, to pay vote is more negative. Um, peer company or peer compensation companies are better selected. They, they don't cheat as much when they uh, pick peer compensation, when the board picks peer compensation uh, companies. 
Um, so, the, and, and so there are a number of things that uh, indicate that SANPAY might have an impact, but we don't you know, really emphasize that. Our real value added in this paper is, that, um, is, is fleshing out the idea that different shareholdings impel you to do different things, and even if that's um, for or against the ISS recommendations. So I'll skip this. I'll de describe it in a second here. Um, yeah, and this is, this is what I just said. There's some stuff here. We don't want to push this too hard, though. The main thing here is that small shareholdings, uh, institutions vote their small shareholdings in a more management hostile way than they vote their large shareholdings. Doesn't mean they always do this, it just means it's a trend, okay? All right, now I, I didn't just type this either, Mike, uh, <laughs> in response to your typing yours uh, at the last, no, you didn't do that either. Um, but uh, the endogeneity question, so we thought, thought about this a lot, of course, and uh, so first of all, I'll try to defend against the, the idea that this is all endogenous, and so the, the way you think about this is that, you know, perhaps it's just that uh, uh, large shareholders are those who love the company, and small shareholders are those who don't. And then, sure, you're going to see large shareholders vote for uh, company management, and small shareholders vote against the company management, or, or more often against company management. And that could be the case, and I think that is the case to some extent. Uh, the thing that provides us some comfort is that index funds don't have any uh, say on what they can hold. And we still find that their smaller shareholdings are voted differently than their larger shareholdings. Index funds can't buy stuff because they love stuff. And, and a little editorial here. Um, I don't really understand, you know, a lot of you probably have a different opinion here, but I don't really understand why index funds are care at all about corporate governance because they have to hold the index. Index funds are not judged by their absolute return guys. Index funds are judged by their tracking error. Okay, so they should care less about whether index companies in their index underperform because if they, they're still fine if they do. Okay, they're, as long as they track the index, we don't care. All right, so I don't, I don't get it and maybe you guys can explain it to me. That's, that's the end of that editorial, okay? Uh, but, uh, but active managers definitely should because they can exit a company, again, Duran's paper. All right, so uh, second kind of thing here. The second defense here um, is uh, one that uh, um, uh, Miriam kind of kicked the uh, board from underneath me here just before this presentation, is that we use this uh, to Russell 2000, 1000 uh, um, discontinuity test. So we um, do some tests there. We find that um, if you look at a stock that is in the bottom of the Russell 2000 versus a similar stock that's in the top of the Russell 2000, um, you know, presumably these two stocks are pretty similar, but one has a bigger weight in index funds because it's, um, it's in the Russell 2000 rather than Russell 1000. We find that that difference in weight um, explains some difference in voting behavior. So that gives us a little bit of comfort too, but then of course Miriam knocked this all out from underneath me, as did some other people here, so I won't. Okay, so what if, what if we, we ignore all this stuff? I'll be done in 30 seconds, I promise. So what if we ignore all this stuff? We don't care. Mike brought this out beautifully. You saw you, you were the vanguard breaking the wind for me just a few minutes ago. Um, we don't care about this, okay, to, to a large extent. Um, it, maybe it is all endogenous, okay? But uh, what we do find is that small shareholders in a company vote more likely against management than do large shareholders, okay? Maybe they do endogenously self-select, and I would expect it to some extent, with the exception of index funds, that this happens. But the idea here is that it's still interesting to see that there is this regularity in voting pattern between small shareholders and large shareholders, um, e you know, even, uh, even within the same institution, uh, because they, they can exit, you know, except for index funds, they can exit these things. So it's still interesting to see this dynamic going on, uh, and CNP has maybe given some voice to those um, self-selecting, displeased um, stockholders. That's fine. Okay, so we're not really overly concerned about endogeneity saying this caused that. Um, okay, and I, I kind of put in there, maybe SANPAY by giving voice, you know, it's been kind of cool to see, we don't have any evidence of this, maybe SANPAY gives a voice to small investors, makes, makes it more likely that small investors will own a stock, we hope. Okay, so I'll conclude there, I'm sorry, I went, I went over. But uh, so we find that uh, funds, and, and, let me, let, and let me emphasize one thing here that I don't think I really made clear, is one of the major contributions of our paper is that it's the dispersion in share ownership that matters for fund governance. In other words, if you have um, a variety of fund owners, block holders, large institutional shareholders that are not block holders, and small shareholders, okay, 
This or versus a different fund that has all dispersed, all small shareholders, this can change the nature of governance of the company, uh, or at least the outcome of the SOP vote. Okay, and I didn't do justice in explaining that, but that's what comes out of the data. So it's the dispersion in ownership that becomes interesting. I'll stop there and look forward to Yanev's uh, comments. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for uh, inviting me. Um, and uh, um, uh, it's, it's a real pleasure discussing this paper. Um, um, the, the paper itself is, uh, you know, I, I, I was reading it. It, it, it's really polished and it has so many things in it. And, you know, I was reading it and I said, oh, well, well what about this endogeneity? What about, everything is there, everything is covered. And, and, and it's, it's, it's a mature paper and, and, and it's, it's a pleasure to read. And I think it's, uh, it's very interesting. Uh, it's also really massive data collection and, you know, seven different databases together. Um, and I think really pushing it on what we can say or what we can have regarding uh, the votes of institutions regarding sale and pay. So I think in that sense, it's, 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 it's really, really a great paper. Um, a little bit about the motivation, um, you know, and we, we talked about it also in other, in other, um, in other papers here. Um, you know, we have institutions, we'd like to know if they monitor, we'd like, we'd like to know what they do, um, and there's a lot of literature about that, and this paper really focuses on one action of institutions. Uh, this is great, but it also creates some, um, you know, in terms of the hypothesis, what exactly is going on behind the scene. Um, you know, many different things could go there, um, and, uh, but, but, you know, the focus is, is really on the say on pay, uh, it's a nice setting. We know what those institutions vote for. Uh, we have, you know, uh, this happening in the last several years, and so we're going to focus on that. Uh, so what does this study do? Um, examine institutional investors' voting behavior with respect to say on pay. It distinguished between institutions who each has large holdings in the firm and institutions that each has low holdings in the firm, and focus also focus on the voting by a mutual fund, and Russ um, um, said that um, clearly and uh, explained it uh, very well, uh, and then basically aggregate the votes at the institutional level. Main finding, just you know, to repeat what was said, institutions with low holdings tend to vote against say on pay, and the result is quite robust, persists after controlling for drivers of institutional votings, uh, more pronounced when there are block holders, so block holders, so large institutions like to, you know, are more happy to vote with management when there are block holders, and so those small, uh, small, small institutional uh, shareholders, they are, um, you know, more vocals there. And, um, uh, and, and, and another thing that's quite important is that even though we do have variation at the mutual fund level within the institution, so some institutions, in fact, allow their mutual funds to vote differently, many of them say, no, this is, this is what we should all say, uh, and so the result is indeed more pronounced at the institutional level. So there's, it seems that there's some kind of a, a governance mechanism within the institution that says, okay, for Apple, we're going to vote, for, we're going to vote this way. And so each mutual fund will vote the same way that the institution s tells it. But that doesn't happen all the time. There's some times where indeed you have this variation, and that's actually what's one of the nice things about this data, that you can actually try and exploit this variation. So I think it's an excellent study, interesting findings. Um, you know, there's a formation of hypothesis, which I think is really, really, extremely important here because, uh, you know, when you see uh, small institutions that vote against and large institutions that vote for, it's a one, it's a one event. We know that there's a lot of things go behind the scene. We know that there are a lot of many different governance mechanisms that could, could actually be alternatives. Okay, so we have to be careful. Um, um, and, um, and I'll talk more about this. Um, as I mentioned, massive data collection and uh, really nice address, addressing the endogeneity issues. I won't uh, talk about that here. What I'm going to talk uh, mostly is about the setting, uh, the South theoretical foundation hypothesis, and a little bit about the um, empirical analysis. Um, so the paper really pushes a lot on the, uh, the idea that um, you know, the large institutions are perhaps, you know, they're they have some disincentives to really fight against management. And so the small institutions are really, uh, are really the good ones, uh, are really the ones that can actually come in and, and they don't, they, they're, not, they're not afraid, okay? They, they're not afraid to raise, to raise their voice. Um, and I, even though I, you know, I, 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 I sympathize with that, uh, with that uh, argument, um, I also want to present sort of, the, sort of the, the other side in a way. And this is not necessarily my 
uh, you know, my own uh, uh, view of it, but it's important to, to, to note that there are some researchers, uh, and this is actually, at, you know, full disclosure, you know, I went to Larker's website that talks about why SEOPay is bad and why everything is really wrong, and, uh, and, and basically it's saying that there's actually a debate whether SEOPay is the right thing or the wrong thing, uh, that there's actually some, some <coughs> findings that it doesn't make big effect, and it's not necessarily that SEOPay uh, specifically, there have been also some you know, other versions of that early on because there was a say on pay on, on equity-based compensation early on and in other countries. And so basically the, the, the argument is, yes, it could be a good mechanism, but there's also cost and we're not sure uh, that it actually is good for all firms. Uh, and because of that, you know, um, and, 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 and you know, taking this as face value and saying, okay, I have a small institution, I have a large institution, um, we take it as given that, oh, say no, saying no is the right thing, but perhaps saying no is the wrong thing. Per perhaps, you know, a small, a, a small owner, uh, you know, raise the voice not because they're thinking about maximizing shareholder value, but because of a different agenda. Uh, and what is that agenda? I'm not sure. Um, you know, I, I, many years ago, I did a discussion on, um, on the... Um, uh, on uh, advisory, um, uh, I'm sorry, not advisory, but uh, um, shareholder proposals. And you see the, these what we call gadflies, right? These, these small investors that come in and they say, oh, you know, we need to vote against management, you know, down with their head. And, uh, and, and, and then you see, you know, what's the agenda behind it? You know, are we really interested in maximizing shareholder value? Uh, and there are other things going on behind, uh, beyond that. And I don't know if that happens here, but the fact that they hold small holdings tells me that to begin with, they don't have much incentives to make a difference, right? Now clearly, yes, say you pay, it's not a big deal. You know, it doesn't cost you much to do it, but still, you know, why should you? Um, so the hypothesis in the paper are, you know, institutions with large shareholdings in a firm tend to vote with management, reason, take advantage of other forms of monitoring. This is one, uh, one hypothesis that, uh, that uh, Russ and, and, and Miriam promote. The other one, institutions with large shareholdings have short-term incentives, they do have uh, they do not have uh, 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 enough incentives to vote against management because such vote will lower the stock price in the short run. And Russ mentioned, you know, he doesn't want to push that too much, but, but you know, this sort of, the, you know, it, it, it's either that, you know, they, 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 they're good at what they're doing, but they do it in other ways, or maybe they're not that, you know, maybe, maybe they're not really thinking about maximizing shareholder value. And so I would, um, you, know, um, you know, this is just to show you, you know, the small fractions that, uh, that, uh, that uh, you know, the holders hold, and so, you know, um, you know the mean is indeed 1.3% per institution, but, you know, the median is 0.2%, and 25% is even less. So, yes, there are some incentives, but I wouldn't argue that these incentives uh, are necessarily that large, at least overall. There could be some areas where they are. Uh, if you indeed look at the um, 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 of a fund, it's even much, you know, it's even, even, even much, much lower. By the way, I wasn't sure about the net asset managed by the fund. Take a look at that. Literature in the legal space, which uh, I think will help you sharpen your, both your institutional story and your hypotheses. For example, there's a fair amount of literature that looks at the centralization of fund voting within fund sponsors. And the big three, BlackRock, Vanguard, and Fidelity, all centralize their votes. So there isn't any variation. And the reason your variation in Fidelity is because Fidelity outsources the voting by its index funds because of an SEC requirement that Fidelity's holdings were too big if it aggregated all of its voting. So that's going to matter to you. There's also a literature on um, index fund or passive investor voting and the extent to which a fund complex's overall voting policies are driven by the general attitude of its funds. That matters. Um, because index funds in this space behave very differently in terms of the dialogue with management. And that's the third thing. Say on pay is one of the big areas in which there's a lot of communication between shareholders. And this is big shareholders in terms of their overall size because this is where they have the ability, the reputation, not just the holdings in that particular fund, but the reputation to get the audience. It's also size on the issuer perspective because it's the big issuers with more developed governance structures who have regularized their issuer shareholder dialogues. You can look at the sharehold, issuer shareholder exchange is one of the examples of that. They've got a protocol for what these meetings look like. 
So all of that, I think, will tell you a little bit more about what's going on. And I think a lot of what's going on is consistent with your results, but not necessarily because of the story that you're telling. So I would love to hear that on which figures you have in mind. Absolutely. I'd love to hear that, for sure. Thank you so much. Then let's do a few more. So, oh. Um, I mean, I think it's, it's a, 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 I really think the, the, the difference in disagreements with ISI need to be broken down into two things, which is there against, but I'm still protecting the management. I think that. you have it there. Yes, okay. We have it. Okay. And the other thing I didn't see, do you have a distance measure in there, which is location of fund versus location of company? Because my, my hypothesis would be you defend the locals. That even I as I says vote against it, I'm local, I can't do that. That's a great idea. Thank you. And both Dawn and then Andrew. Maybe the Jeff Mayor by Amelia Scoop that to go over and they talk about how the conflict of interest with the one with uh firms because they want their pension uh, and so on. I think that slight effect could affect what might be called homage to explain. Yes. That paper self serving propaganda is very close to Fandani and the review of <laughs> and they sign. Yes, please. And I don't know, I didn't hear probably what Laurent was saying, but one, one big issue seems to be that um, one reason why large institutional investors may be voting with men is that these guys offer a package of service also to companies. So if, if these, uh, yeah, so, so I think that is something that we should consider very carefully to see <coughs> the, the, the obvious usual suspect that immediately comes to mind. They are voting it because they offer pension plan uh, investments and, and other type of, it's not just an investor, it's also providing other services. All right. Yeah. Okay, okay, well, that's a lot of stuff. Okay, I'll make it very quick here. Uh, so uh, first of all, Yanev, uh, thanks so much. These are great comments. Um, and um, so, I, so I, I think we down down to, I toned down a bit that San Jose is good or bad, and I, I, I try to express that. The paper I think is not quite as nuanced as that, and this, but but we, we don't know if San Jose is good or bad. I think we, we 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 can agree with you on that. We simply don't know. All we're saying is that San Jose has changed the calculus of what's going on in the capital um, structure. Um, and, and it may very well be that the small institutions are gadflies and it's just made them more powerful. Who knows? Who knows? Um, it like the Trump effect, right? People voted for Trump, didn't really vote for him. They, they were right. tantrum were, yeah, were, tan tan yeah. people, right? Um, let me see. Um, right, block holders, as, as, uh, as, and I agree that block holders seem to be voting with management. We're not, we're not really saying strongly that they are not good for a company. But kind of our findings seem to indicate that they serve a different purpose. It's kind of a watchdog that doesn't uh, you know, explicit, but is always there to make sure that management doesn't get out of line, especially maybe when there are uh, make somewhat negative CFA votes. Many, uh, oh, director elections. Uh, so we did look at director elections. The results are weaker. Right. And so to us, this meant that San Pay is a stronger way for, or is the preferred right. way for small shareholders to. Right. We, we did try. I mean, we did also look at other votes. And I think, you know, director election makes a lot of sense because there are many votes. So you really have enough observations to see if there's a pattern there. And really, the, the, vote, the vote for which we found the most consistent results and very strong, and no matter what you did or sliced the data, was really San Pay. And that, we think that further supports our, you know, story, which is you want to govern your company for your large shareholders, large holdings, you'll talk to the company. For the small ones, you're not going to be lazy, you're not just going to always vote with management, but you are still going to use this vote to say something, just like you said, you know, hey, I'm here, you know, notice me, I'm unhappy about something, if you're unhappy about something. But why should you vote for other proposals? Well, what? what? What's the reason that it shouldn't work the same story for other proposals? For other proposals, for, or including direct election. I, 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 do you want to answer it? I'm happy. To, okay. Yeah. So, if, for example, even if you look at cars, okay, you look at uh, fraction voted in support of directors in cars. You don't find a relation there. And uh, you know, we can do a better job with the cars to also show larger magnitudes if we condition it on extreme um, opposition rates. Um, but I, but. 
but it seems like the say on pay vote, it, because, you know, and again, that, that's, a, a, that's a, a hard part in the paper to sell, you know, to really convince the reader this is the, uh, you know, this is the vote that shareholders use to say something about, about uh, yeah. whether so they have I think our conjecture here is that um, say on pay is a, an expression about management where a director vote may be kind of interpreted as a, an expression about the director exactly. and management. So that, that's our conjecture about why those two are a little bit different. Um, so very, very, very quickly, uh, Benny, thanks. Uh, portfolio weight, and I didn't show you those results. Portfolio weight and share farm on are two different things, and I agree with you. There are two interpretations. Thank you for reinforcing that. No big effect on car. I think that could be that we're not sure if this is good for these companies or not, or it could also be that these votes are already partially anticipated uh, and you can't capture the car very well in <coughs> three days, six days, nine days, 12 days. Jill, thanks a lot. Des, we're going to be on top of you for more information on that. That's what this interdisciplinary is all about. Um, that's, that's fascinating stuff. And this one versus local. Thomas, thanks for that. And uh, uh, I didn't quite draw, I didn't quite understand yours, but we can talk uh, at the break. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, before a few housekeeping things. So maybe before everything, so I, I think, uh, you know, every conference uh, depends on the people who do the real work on the ground. So Yael left Barilan yesterday in Tel Aviv, and he laid in the corner, uh, he lay next to her, and now all helped with the computer today, so. Yes, it, it was wonderful. Thank you. So, and then uh, dinner is at 6 o'clock, just across from the stairs at a place called Tuo, which is really nice. So, and you can wander around for an hour after Marco tells you his message to the world. <laughs> and a reminder, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock at the reception for those going on the tour of the economy. Yeah, okay, so on behalf of everybody, just let me thank uh, Benny and uh, Ishai for doing the link work, the exceptional hosts. Um, let's also thank the Ackerman chair, Mr. Ackerman, and his people for co-funding the conference. Uh, I'd also like to thank on everybody's behalf, uh, NBIM and NFI, or the PETA, uh, for funding another bit of the conference. Uh, but without you, we wouldn't be here, or we wouldn't have been able to be here. Um, now, all the materials, uh, if you haven't sent them, please do send them. They're going to go on to ecgi.global. That's ECGI's new website. Um, Elaine uh, does that. There'll be photographs and everything. I think you, if you look in the past, these things are really records of these and, uh, locations. Which is location of fun versus location of company. Because my, my hypothesis would be you defend the locals. That like even ISI says vote against it. I'm local, I can't do that. That's a great idea. Thank you. And both, go on, and then I'm Maybe the Jeff gave by Emile Skuta to the quarter. They talk about how the conflict of interest with the one with the firms because they want their pension and so on. I think that's my effect. Good effect. What might be called homage to explain. Yes. That paper, self serving propaganda, is very close to some money that they refuse. And they sign. Yes, please. I don't know. I didn't hear probably what the robot said. But one, one big issue seems to be that um, one reason why large institutional investors may be voting with men is that these guys offer a package of service also to companies. So if, if these, uh, yeah, so, so I think that is something that we should uh, consider very carefully to see <coughs> the, the, the obvious usual suspect that immediately comes to mind. They are voting it because they offer pension plan uh, investments and, and other type of, it's not just an investor, it's also providing other services. All right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Well, that's a lot of stuff. Okay, I'll make it very quick here. Uh, so, um, first of all, again, uh, thanks so much. These are great comments. Um, and um, so, I, so I think we down, down, to, I toned down a bit that San Pay is good or bad, and I, I, I try to express that. The paper, I think, is not quite as nuanced as that, and this. but, but we, we don't know if San Pay is good or bad. I think we, 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 we can agree with you on that. We simply don't know. All we're saying is that San Pay has changed the calculus 
of what's going on in the capital um, structure. Um, and, and it may very well be that the small institutions are gadflies and it's just made them more powerful. Who knows? Who knows? Um, like the Trump effect, right? People voted for Trump, didn't really vote for him. They, they were right. tantrum people, yeah, tan 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 <laughs> right? Um, let me see. Um, right, block holders, as, as, uh, as, and I agree that block holders seem to be voting with management. We're not, we're not really saying strongly that they are not good for a company, but kind of our findings seem to indicate that they serve a different purpose. It's kind of a watchdog that doesn't uh, you know, explicit, but is always there to make sure that management doesn't get out of line, especially maybe when there are uh, make somewhat negative CFP votes. Many, uh, oh, director elections. Um, so we did look at director elections. Yeah. The results are weaker. Right. And so to us, this meant that San Pay is a stronger way for, or is the preferred right. way for small shareholders to. Right. We, we did try. I mean, we did also look at other votes. And I think, you know, director election makes a lot of sense because there are many votes. So you really have enough observations to see if there's a pattern there. And really, the, the, vote, the vote for which we found the most consistent results and very strong, and no matter what you did or sliced the data, was really San Pay. And that we think that further supports our you know, story, which is you want to govern your company for your large shareholders. Large holdings, you'll talk to the company. For the small ones, you're not going to be lazy. You're not just going to always vote with management, but you are still going to use this vote to say something, just like you said, you know, hey, I'm here. You know, notice me. I'm unhappy about something, if you're unhappy about something. But why should you vote for other proposals? Well, what? what? What's the reason that it shouldn't work the same story for other proposals? For other proposals? For, or including the rectal election. I, 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 do you want to answer it? I'm happy. Okay, so it, for example, even if you look at cars, okay, you look at uh, fraction voted in support of directors and cars, you don't find a relation there. And uh, you know, we can do a better job with the cars to also show larger magnitudes if we condition it on extreme um, opposition rates. Um, but I, but but it seems like the say on pay vote is because, you know, and again, that, that's, a, a, that's a hard part in the paper to sell, you know, to really convince the reader this is the, uh, you know, this is the vote that shareholders use to say something about, about uh, yeah. whether so they I have I think our conjecture here is that um, say on pay is a, an expression about management, where a director vote may be kind of interpreted as a, an expression about the director exactly. and management. So that, that's our conjecture about why those two are a little bit different. Um, so very, very, very quickly, uh, Benny, thanks. Uh, portfolio weight, and I didn't show you those results. Portfolio weight and share firm on are two different things, and I agree with you. There are two interpretations. Thank you for reinforcing that. No big effect on cars. <coughs> I think that could be that we're not sure if this is good for these companies or not, or it could also be that these votes are already partially anticipated, uh, and you can't capture the car very well in <coughs> three days, six days, nine days, twelve days. Jill, thanks a lot. Yes, we're going to be on top of you for more information on that. That's what this interdisciplinary is all about. Um, that's, that's fascinating stuff. And this one versus local. Thomas, thanks for that. And uh, uh, I didn't quite, Ron, I didn't quite understand yours, but we can talk uh, at the break. Thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, before a few housekeeping things. So maybe before everything, so I, I think, uh, you know, Every conference uh, depends on the people who do the real work on the ground. So, Yael left Barilan yesterday in Tel Aviv, and Dirit in the corner, uh, laying next to her, and Naor helped with the computer today. So, <laughs> and then, uh, yes, it, it was working. Thank you. So, <laughs> And then uh, dinner is at 6 o'clock, just across from the stairs at a place called Turo, which is really nice. So, and you can wander around for an hour after Marco tells you his message to the world. <laughs> and a reminder, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock at the reception for those going on the tour of the Yeah, okay, so on behalf of everybody, just let me thank uh, Benny and uh, Ishai for really doing the work, being exceptional hosts. Um, let's also thank the Ackerman Chair, Mr. Ackerman, and his people for co-funding the conference. Uh, I'd also like to thank on everybody's behalf uh, NBIM and NFI, or the PETA, uh, for funding another bit of the conference. Uh, but without you, we wouldn't be here, or we wouldn't have been able to be here. Um, now, all the materials, uh, if you haven't sent them, please do send them. 
they're going to go onto ecgi.global. That's ECGI's new website. Um, Elaine uh, does that. There'll be photographs and everything. I think you, if you look in the past, these things are really records of these locations and how memorable they are. I think this one is going to be one that's going to be in people's good memories for a long time. Now, uh, ECGI Global was funded by the website, was funded by the European Forward uh, Research Foundation. Uh, you saw the logo outside. The main donors to that foundation are RBP and Investor IP. So I also, in their absence, like to thank them uh, because they make that possible uh, because the aim is leading research with global impact. And I think uh, we will uh, all work with them to make that possible as well. And that's all before dinner. <laughs> and I think we're going to have uh, more than enjoyable time. Thank you very much. Thank you.